Welcome back to Realism Overhaul. Today we are looking at completing a few early game contracts, moving our way slowly down the tree and slowly up to a little more exciting rocketry contracts. Luckily, uh, sounding rockets are pretty much going to not exist after this episode. Uh, we do have one more launch of the S2 later on, but right now we are kicking off with a KX2 flight, actually the first air launch flight. Um, and this is before we have the conic uh, cockpit upgrade. So once again, the service ceiling is around 30 kilometers and you can't really get higher than that until it's upgraded. Unfortunately, I air launched a bit too far away from the KSC and had to ditch in the water, which was honestly a little bit terrifying, but you know, we call that a success. Uh, the vehicle didn't rapidly and unexpectedly disassemble this time around, and Jebediah was safe for now. And here we move on to the S2 flight, which I had just mentioned. This is the final flight of the S2. This particular launch actually went a lot more straight up than I expected it to. And it, um, let's see, I believe it beat some records. Yeah, altitude record of 323 kilometers and it survived re-entry and was recovered perfectly fine. Swiftly into the second half of 1953, we have another air launch of the KX-2, which happens to be the final flight of this KX-2 series lifetime. Uh, Bob Kerman at the controls. You can see we've reached an altitude way too high, and this was done accidentally, um, but I do blame myself for it. You can see here, Bob is actually completely incapacitated for quite a long time. And I was actually extremely worried that he would actually die before he reached low enough altitude to get oxygen to breathe again. But luckily this wasn't the case. We just, I think just barely got to low altitude in time. Um, but something interesting happened when we took control back over. See here, we started into a dead spin into a very high dynamic pressure which led to the disassembly of the vehicle. The cockpit manages to survive. Um, I had to play the gear for, I'm not really sure why. Um, I was pretty much panicking at this point, trying to do everything I can to jump out of the craft itself, which I do not have the astronaut complex upgraded enough to perform EVAs, but I was trying to eject from the vehicle anyway. Um, and luckily I did discover in Ship Manifest, you still can force the EVA, which in some instances other than, well, bailing out of a broken aircraft, um, I could see being an issue with um, not with using like intended mechanics and sort of cheesing the system. For instance, I will never use this shit manifest um, workaround to go on an EVA in space or in any situation to grab science or basically cheat in any way. But I felt it was, it wasn't really cheating to eject oneself out of the cockpit here. Um, it did take a little bit. If I waited a few more seconds before I figured that out, uh, Bob here would not have survived. Um, you could just say those, those few seconds of trying to figure out what would actually work was him banging his little Kerbal fists on the, the windshield trying to break it open because I don't have ejection seats or anything, but... Bob was available, or not available, Bob was able to climb out and survive, the, although the KX-2 program is grounded from now on because of this event. 
Now to move on to this rocket that's actually on the screen now. This is the S3 and it is right now intending to complete the downrange 3 million meter contract. I think that's 3 million, 3,000 kilometers. Um, and it does this with having an A4 bottom stage and then a kick stage to an Aerobe that is spin stabilized and I think the angle is around 45 degrees. Um, the flight plan of this was basically use the A4 to pitch over to 45 degrees and then launch this thing spin stabilized until it flamed out and it is actually um, going a little bit past the rated burn time and luckily we had no failures because if we had some failures it would probably not meet its mark so I feel very lucky that we had no failures and all we have left to do is glide to our downrange um, contract uh, parameter that's the word I was looking for you can see here the mech job flight uh, manager does show the downrange However, also in the contracts menu up on the top right here, it will also show the downrange as well. So I just decided to look at that. Now, there was some sort of strange visual bugs with clouds, which I've been working on because it's a it's a different version of RSS VE that I'm running. You'll notice there's um, city lights, different clouds, lightning for instance, but I was having an issue with the clouds and sort of this greenish blue blob over cities and I was messing with scatter settings and eve settings for a long time to fix it and what you see now um, is, isn't is going to be like this next episode. Next episode I have the clouds uh, set up differently. Um, essentially what I was what I've been doing is messing with cl uh, cloud color settings and a bunch of other stuff to try to get those blobs to not be noticeable because it was a bit weird seeing that as you ascend to just have a green and then blue blob just slowly disappearing over cities. Um, but I just I realized that changing the colors really changed the clouds way too much. So I, I came up with another um, set of settings for the scatter which we'll see next episode that also fixes the issues where the clouds are like hardly noticeable and kind of see-through in the atmosphere um so now in the next episode we will have much more prevalent clouds and because of that the blobs over the cities are less noticeable so both good things in my opinion but uh to move on to the footage you see on the screen Yes, we have once again strapped a glider to a A4 rocket, and this is just something that happens in every playthrough. I don't really know why, it's just, it's way too fun, it's way too interesting to me to do this. Um, this is after we have discovered the R&D Conic Cockpit upgrade to up its service ceiling to around 70 or 75 kilometers. And we've also have, well, RCS ports here as well, it's because the atmosphere is way too thin for our um, control surfaces to grip. So we, this is the first time pilots in this series are using reaction control thrusters to maneuver a vehicle up in the upper atmosphere. And it's basically just to put the nose back facing down so we can go into this kind of high G dive um, and then level out. And well, the, this mission flew, I think only two times? Actually, no, um, it only flew once. This was its maiden flight and the only flight this episode. Um, and it was entirely successful, breaking a lot of crewed records and also completing the X-Plane's high difficult contract. When, and we glide back to the runway perfectly safe. I was also messing with the different color options from B9 Wings, as well as the Textures Unlimited Redux something or another. Um, not all the parts are supported, but a lot of them are. For instance, I really wish this cockpit was supported because I really wanted to paint it orange, but we may do with getting uh, some of the wingtips orange, which I kind of liked, but uh, we probably won't see it too often.
this next launch is the new S4, which is just an A4 suborbital contract, and the payload happens to be, I believe, a bio sample, a bio capsule sample, which I'm not exactly sure what it's intended to be, although I know historically we've launched like small animals like monkeys and dogs, so I sort of imagined it would be something similar, so we have something like that inside of a capsule here, which is a reason why um, I went with some of the design choices. For instance, I definitely wanted to not have to spin stabilize this thing if there was a small creature inside of it. Um, and so what I ended up doing, because this is only a single stage, there was a problem uh, with this design uh, initially, because the center of mass happens to float really, really low towards the engine when the tank is empty, which caused the vehicle to sort of flop end after end after flame out since it was still in the atmosphere. So what I had to do was actually put a lead ballast onto the nose of the craft, right where these uh, separatron motors are right there, those boost back motors, uh, is a tank full of lead to keep the center of mass higher up and this rocket pointed straight when it uh, flamed out in the atmosphere. And then this um, capsule is also designed not to flop around as well and it will pretty much go straight up and straight back down, making sure to not give our small pilot, whoever that may be, um, any, any dizziness or anything like that. So this mission was to go straight up and straight down and fall back into the atmosphere, hopefully uh, getting to, well, the Atlantic Ocean safely. bit of a rough re-entry, uh, probably a lot of vibrations and turbulence and all that, but we stayed straight as an arrow for the most part. Uh, the only problems being it really, really wanted to keep splashing uh, and bouncing up and down when it hit the Atlantic Ocean. But all in all, mission successful. I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and peace out.